So your speakers are Billy Snyman and Alta Widendal. Uh, Billy is a prominent businessman in Pretoria, and he has been coaching for quite some time already. He specializes in business coaching and relationship coaching, um, intelligence, uh, positive intelligence, um, Enneagram coaching, and so forth. And uh, so quite knowledgeable in this area. And Alta Widendal, she is a specialist in financial coaching. So financial well-being is her passion. She is absolutely fantastic in what she does and uh, definitely worth listening to. So um, without further ado, Billy, there you go. And uh, I also want to welcome my colleague, um, Alta. Uh, any words from your side? Yeah, Vili, um, thanks. I'm really looking forward to tonight's discussion. Um, we speak quite often about, you know, the fear of abandonment and rejection and the impact of that on financial planning and money behaviors in relationships. And uh, yeah, um, I would encourage anybody, you know, maybe to take notes, get a pen and paper out, you know, take notes, because I think we're going to really have a nice discussion here tonight. And um, we will also share it, um, you know, with the people later on, um, on YouTube. So, um, yeah, my passion, just to start off with, my passion is really what I've realized. And I think for some of the people that attended our sessions before, I always say, you know, it's easy to look at numbers, but um, we don't work with numbers. We work with relationships and money behaviors. And, um, you know, if we work with emotions and we look at what is the emotions and the Im impact of um, emotions on financial planning and when we make decisions you know it's huge and people don't understand that and that's really my passion so um yo Willy, um i don't know what, what yeah, you've got to no no there. absolutely and also why the topic is so important is that if you learn over time to deal with abandonment and rejection in the right way it will certainly help your your life in general it will help you to make better choices you will live more healthily you'll be more calm uh, and i say also less cortisol and adrenaline running in your body that makes you sick and this is so important and we don't want to rush the topic we really want you to understand that if you we will also give you some tools and tips to work with and also that you can take it forward. I mean, we cannot in detail go to, to all the details of it, but we will, we will definitely equip you tonight with a couple of, of, of worthy tools that you can directly apply. That's very important. And if you can take any one thing of maybe five or six things, then it will be worthwhile. Um, but we need to understand exactly what we mean by it. Anything that you want to add in terms of uh, maybe an example of two, Alta, what, what, how do you see abandonment and rejection? Yeah, Billy, I think it's when we, when we say yes, when we want to say no, um, you know, because we, we fear that somebody will reject us or, you know, it's typical when we get angry or when we, you know, shut down and we don't talk when we need to talk and ha can have healthy discussions with somebody else. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, we can see people getting angry, you know, get out and walk away. And it's like you said, it's that adrenaline cortisol reactions that we've got. Um, and we're all unique. We all got gifts and talents that we can share with the world. It's just how we need to manage ourselves and also in our relationships. And it's, as you said, um, you know, to identify times when you actually said yes, when you wanted to say no, um, those are the typical examples and you actually abandoning yourself then in the process as well um, because you've got that deep fear of rejection and abandonment. And, and what I want to share with everybody tonight is that we really, we've all got it. Um, that's why we're so unique. And that is also creating a lot of conflict within relationships. And my passion is obviously to help people with that. Willie, I don't know if you've got any other examples or yeah, also, that um, also just one thing before I maybe add an example in my own life. Um, 
you know, they say that the, 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 it's the same area of your brain that becomes activated as when you experience physical pain. You know, that, that is why we experience, uh, you know, heavy abandonment or, or light rejection. We experience it as physical pains in our bodies. And we are all different and the same. And sometimes light rejections can be, for example, you know, a message that's not being returned in time according to your perception, or we get, uh, you want to date somebody to get turned down, uh, or somebody's not visiting you and you expected that, or your partner decides it's time to leave you for another partner and all those, these heavy things. And how we react to that is, is, depends on personality. We're going to talk about that as well. But uh, some of us experience like anger uh, or anxiety, uh, depression, jealousy, uh, sadness in, in various degrees. Um, and, you know, especially when it, when it comes to a death situation, I mean, if you think of people that are married for 10, 20, 30, or 40 happy years, uh, I had a friend that uh, told me that um, it feels as if somebody took a, uh, what is a saw in Engels, like a saw. So, and, yeah, so it's like cut through her, you know, it was extreme pain. And I can remember with, with my, my own uh, divorce with, with Anneli um, many years ago, it was such a despair. It, it's like extreme despair. But then again, if you compare your life with other people's lives, then you say, but, ach, you know, uh, my life is actually not that bad. You know, it's, it's all about how we interpret our, our abandonment, uh, etc. And another quick example is um, when I was in my 30s, uh, I always had excuses uh, for couldn't do things because uh, I grew up without a, a, my real father because he, he died on me when I was four and a half. And I was driving in a car and uh, I was explaining my life to, to this person driving with me. And the way the person asked the question to me changed something in my head because I was starting again to put blame on my circumstances. And this person asked me a question, Willie, how long ago did your father die? And then I realized at that moment, you know, you need to move on. Whatever happened to you, you need to move on. And, and that, talk, that, that question sort of in a way, uh, uh, changed uh, changed my life. So in my life, that's the two examples. Um, if I can then ask um, uh, Alta, uh, maybe we can uh, other people can also share. But but I think at this point of time, um, how do you see the impact on on this on on relationships and money? Yeah, um, Vali, I see it um, especially in you know I work with couples. I work with um, you know, mother, daughters, you know, children, you, you name it. And I think it's, it's something really, if you look at uh, what's happening in society now, also with COVID, you know, there was a lot of financial anxiety and stress. And, you know, people reached out for us to help, you know, for, and people maybe in the audience can identify with that. You know, people actually experienced financial anxiety in the last couple of years. Um, but how do we help, um, you know, without taking the full responsibility for somebody else, unless, you know, um, we want to agree to it. That be because sometimes we take on the responsibility of somebody else and we don't actually want to agree with that. We, we actually walking around with that little bit of resentment, um, you know, if we, if we do something for somebody else. I think something that I really can see on a daily basis, um, especially in marriages, I think sometimes for me as a financial advisor, um, somebody that's very, you know, familiar with financial discussions, you know, I'm not scared of having financial discussions with people, um, but I see a lot of females where they're too scared to ask a question or to raise a question. And I think it's really subconscious beliefs around money that's keeping women stuck. Um, where they always say, you know, the, the male must take responsibility. And it's an old belief system where a male needs to take responsibility for, you know, the finances. And some women then get stuck in that, listen, I'm not allowed to ask. 
I'm not allowed to know, you know, and they obviously run around with that fear of rejection and fear of abandonment by just, and, and it's detrimental to them as a female, because, you know, we need to get in trust relationships, you get that secure sense of security. You know, if you, in an environment where you can ask a question and nobody is saying to you, listen, it's something that, no, we don't have time or don't worry, or, you know, just move on. And I'm not, I want to help people. I'm not just saying it's only women or males, you know, experiencing this. It can be anyone, um, you know, it can be a child mother relationship. It can be um, a business partner relationship. You know, we're not going to talk about this right now and we walk away, you know, and what is the impact of that? You know, because we, we get a sense of that abandonment and rejection all of a sudden. And we cannot make financial decisions if we don't feel safe. And all of us, that is our, one of our basic needs is to have safety within our relationships and especially with money. Um, and I want to encourage people that, you know, not to be afraid to have money conversations, to actually bring up the topic and, you know, we will later see in the, dis in the discussion, it's sometimes other people's securities or insecurities that you're triggering when you're asking, you know, these type of questions, but we need to have the conversations and I want to encourage people to have real conversations. I want at this stage, maybe um, we discussed it earlier today, if I can maybe share my screen. Uh, if everybody can see this one, it's a blank. I know it's not the right one. Uh, basically there, you know, that question, you know, that sounds quite like a hard one. Uh, Alta, can you see what I've gone there? Uh, have you abandoned yourself? Yeah, yeah, um, you really, yeah uh, what I want to get to this question is, if we're always saying yes to other people and we don't feel comfortable raising a question where we know that we also taking a responsibility and I'm, let's use finances then we actually self-abandoning ourselves because we're not taking responsibility for our own lives. And it's a form of self-abandonment. And I think we all do it in some way. It can be, you know, with a child, with a, you know, your spouse. But if you say yes and you want to say no or, you know, and your people's please, what I'm actually saying is to live for the approval of other people, not to be rejected or abandoned, then you're actually um, applying a form of self-abandonment. And at the end of the day, who's going to take responsibility for that? It's only yourself. Um, the more healthy we get into our relationships, the more we understand our own needs and, you know, can discuss that in healthy conversations with other people, then we will not, um, you know, go through patterns of self-abandonment. And I want to ask the audience tonight, have you abandoned yourself? And maybe somebody wants to share a lesson where they self-abandoned and they learned the hard lesson because it's painful lessons to learn if you put yourself on the back burner to live for the approval of somebody else. I don't know if there's anybody that wants to share Welcome. Who wants to, to share maybe something or want to share to the group? Oh, they can put in the chat also. Yeah, in the chat. Yeah. Life, yeah. If there's anyone. Yeah, you can, you can put in the chat. If I can maybe, uh, maybe from a financial perspective, I think where I've abandoned myself, Alta, was many years ago uh, where I helped um, some friends with car payments. And I myself didn't have the money. And that really uh, put a huge strain on my marriage at that time. And it also played a role in the dissolvement. So is these things that happens to us, you know, and uh, we, we hopefully can learn from that. Uh, Annika, your hand is up. You must unmute yourself, Annika. Uh, you're still not unmuted. Willem, maybe you... You have a green I see if my niece asked to unmute. That's it. That's it now. Can you all hear me? Yes, Miss Penewer. 
Okay, on this on this stage, I've got a problem with my own son. He's a first year university student, and it's very easy for him to just let me to just phone me and say, "Mom, I need some petrol, or I need some food, or I need some whatever." So I feel then I cannot let him stand without petrol somewhere, or he he's visiting visiting friends, and I cannot let him be at the other house and not provide anything for them while he's there. So continuously, I, I've got a call, mom, give me money for this, give me money for that. And I know that I've got a certain budget. He also had received his um, sock help and <laughs> he doesn't want to talk to me about it when I ask him, let's, let's sit down. I want to see what you do with your money so we can work it out. At this stage, I'm just going further, further and further back into my own savings because I, I think I must provide for my child to be a better person or to be able to study and um, get his own job later on um, but I don't know where to draw the line as to say listen you had your own sock out or spending money or whatever you have to to be able to manage that so that's the problem that I have on the moment to not to, not to feel bad about I think he's going to be hungry tonight or he's going to stand without petrol or something so I need to to understand where do I stop and where does he start that's what I think. That's a good one. Anybody wants to give an idea about that? A uh, little bit later, we're going to talk about a specific tool, maybe on that, Annika. But for now, is there anybody that wants to give an idea or an answer to Annika? Bali, I, I will give some comments on that. Um, sure. I think it's about financial boundaries that we need to set um, because Annika, otherwise you're going to abandon yourself. Um, it's all about education. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, your son will not know really how to manage money. And as a, you know, a parent, you are there to guide him. So I always say to people, you know, it's an opportunity for education. It's an opportunity to take responsibility. And it's an opportunity to actually have healthy conversations of what is really needs and wants, because, you know, we all want things, but um, there's a huge difference between needs and wants. You know, I can, I can shop at the, you know, best clothing stores, or I can have clothes to wear. So, um, you know, and this, we need to differentiate between needs and wants. And, you know, um, it's, it's, it's an opportunity for education. That's my suggestion, um, you know, to help him to budget. Because if you do not help your child at this stage to budget, you know, it's an easy way out. Don't be uh, surprised when he's 40 or 50 if he still found mom to help me out. You have to put a boundary, but it's through kindness and through kind words and through education that you can really help him. That's my personal opinion. Vili, I don't know if you want to add anything. No, thank you, Alta. I think that is fine. Yeah, I think like, later in the program, we will also have a toolkit that, that Annika can use. Thank you, Annika, for your comment. I think at this stage, Alta, um, you uh, developed a bit of a questionnaire, uh, which I think can be very helpful to, to apply. Uh, if I can just quickly share my screen again. Um, I think this is the, the right one that I'm sharing. Let me just see. Uh, yes, it is that one there. Uh, let's yeah. say go to from current slide. There you are. No, no, it's not that one. There it is. That one. Okay. Yeah. So I want to ask the audience just to take, I'm going to give them three minutes as a reflection exercise to just go through the questions and maybe you realize that you've got some rejection sensitivity. Um, as I mentioned, we all got it, but maybe there's one or two or three that's really standing out for yourself. I'm gonna give you some time, just some two minutes, and then we're gonna discuss one or two. Thanks, Alta.
maybe we can ask um, if you want to, you can put in the chat room, maybe if there's one that's standing out for you um, and you want to maybe just share your biggest one that you've identified now um, tonight. And you're more than welcome if you want to share it in the chat. Just one that you've identified. Okay, I see too generous, worthless, neglected as a child. Too generous with people, giving off my time. Too generous. Feeling guilty for being your true self and scared that you might, might be rejected. Very generous. Always put other people's needs before my own. Taken for granted, unloved, worthless, not appreciated, scared of rejection. Emotionally withdrawn, maybe, scared of rejection, another one. Yeah, Vinny, I think, um, I don't know if you want to share, please. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's um, if, if we now read what you've just um, put, what they, they put there, is the fact that we're also the same and different. But we are many of them that's the same. And, and you know, a lot of uh, signs of, of rejection, abandonment comes out in, in a lot with, with people pleasing. That happens a lot. Uh, also with um, with jealousy sometimes, you know, and, and trouble trusting intentions of other people uh, or feeling not um, secure in, in relationships, uh, sometimes a need for control or want to be controlled and sometimes uh, difficulty in feeling uh, intimate, uh, having intimate relationships and, and, and we all, uh, most people uh, have this. And, and sometimes if you listen to other people's uh, pain and these realities, then we, we know that we, we're human. And, but we have a choice. And, and, and that is the whole point. And you see also, if we go further now with some uh, other insights, is that we also have a choice to use those tools. We have a choice. And sometimes when we feel this, these dark emotions, I would say, is we sometimes feel that we don't have a choice. But we actually do have a choice. So yeah, the, and, and also, um, uh, you know, yes, I say we're all human and we, we are the same, but we're really different and we're really different in, in awesome personalities. Uh, and uh, Alta, shall I go through the Enneagram quickly? I, I think, yeah. the, you know, there's, there's a tool on the market and I know a lot of you know about the tool. It's, it's called uh, the Enneagram uh, or maybe just that, that, Point there first, uh, Alta, that you actually, uh, do you want to read it, Alta? Yeah, I just uh, wanted to tell the audience, we all got this uh, rejection and fear of abandonment. And, but what we need to remember that we all, all got value. So rejection doesn't mean you aren't good enough. It simply means the other person failed to notice your value. We've all got value that we need to share. And it's really to understand your own gifts and talents so that if somebody's projecting on you their own fears and limiting beliefs or whatever that you understand your own worth and it doesn't break down you know your own sense of well-being so yeah Absolutely. and the enneagram is a brilliant tool to help people with that i know you're going to take us quickly through that yeah uh, i'm not going into the detail it's just to to important to say that these are words that they use to describe people's thoughts and behaviors and just take note that you have all of this inside you. 
sometimes, depending on the context, you can be very uh, strict perfectionistic. You can be quite a considered helper as number two. You can be the so-called competitive achiever, number three, or an intense creative person with very, very deep feelings and emotions. Or you can be the so-called quiet specialist that wants to know a lot, uh, like a, read a lot of books, etc. cetera. And, or, or you get these so-called people that are a bit more, not a big risk takers in life, they're called the loyal skeptics. Uh, or you get these number sevens, that's the enthusiastic visionaries, uh, or you have these so-called active controllers, and then the adaptive peacemakers. So that is just categories to, to describe a person's behavior, but you've got all of them. It's just that sometimes you swivel towards the one, you, you make more of the one, you know, as a default position. Uh, my own default position is I'm, I'm a typical seven. I'm an enthusiastic visionary. And um, uh, Alta, what is your number? I forgot. I think it's a six. <laughs> six, yeah. <laughs> the loyal what, is what is a six, Alta? Yeah, so we're brilliant financial planners because we can see risks way ahead of anybody else. So we have sleepless nights and worry about everybody that's not implementing financial solutions and not updating wells. So, um, but yeah, um, it's really, you know, risk, you look for security, you look for risk, and you also, um, my biggest gift is the sense of responsibility, but if I'm unhealthy, you know, it creates fear and anxiety in, in me, and we all got stress, and then it creates the cortisol that I don't like, so, um, yeah, that's, that's me. And, and you're, you're, you're married to eight. Yes, I'm married to an eight. How is it eight? <laughs> How is it eight? <laughs> uh, eight is an active controller. So, um, yeah, and you see a lot of married couples uh, where there's an eight husband or an eight female, and normally they pair well with a two or a six. Um, yeah, it's just typical, you know. Remember, subconsciously, we attract the opposite. So, you know, they can be a gift for you in your life if you understand it because you, you need to become more like them and they need to become more like you. So um, subconsciously, we attract also other people to help us, um, you know, heal from our own unconscious and subconscious limitations. Yeah, they, they, thank you, Alta. There are various tools in the market, but why we share this is just as one of the great tools is to become more aware of who you are and how your behavior affects other people. And um, it has an impact on conflict styles. So, so how we then deal with, with rejections and abandonment is different for the various styles. Um, uh, Alta, if you can maybe explain this better. Yeah, um, Vili, so typically, you know, when I had a very um, complicated situation and I could not understand why people will not take my financial advice, you know, it was a typical six that was married with a, with a seven. And um, so for six, that's very security orientated, you know, they plan, they want, um, you know, they want to do planning. And seven, um, you know, it's you. So imagine me and you are married. <laughs> um, but the seven is really, you know, um, freedom. You know, they like have to have a sense of freedom when they look at money. And they've got a very positive outlook. We are more security driven. Um, so yeah, and I could not understand why the seven, um, you know, was thinking that, the, you know, did not Im implement my solution, did not want to budget, you know. So, and it really, I, I thought I'm, you know, the wrong advisor or, you know, cannot get through to somebody. And then I realized, but listen, the map is not the territory, you know, we all think different and we need to understand the people to actually be able to help them. And uh, yeah, it's a powerful tool for me. I've also worked with um, a business where there was a two and nine and a six and you know, the two, nine and the six, and I don't know what's the other person, possibly an eight, a two was typically, you know, they give us. So, you know, they also have that fear of abandonment and rejection. And they just give to other people. And if you ask them, listen, but what do you want? They can't tell you um, what do they want because they never thought about themselves of what do they need. And you can imagine how it's playing out with money. You know, if you typically, um, you know, living this unconscious patterns. Uh, a nine 
you know, they fear conflict. So typically, you know, what will be the situation? You know, they're just going to keep quiet and not say anything. Um, and, you know, the eight, nines, and ones is normally the action types. The, the two, threes, and fours is the hard type. So they always feel, 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 but they can't go over to action, you know. And the five, six, and sevens is the intellectual types. So they think they're always in the head. Um, I'm the worry type, the six type, no longer, you know, I'm much more healthier. <laughs> but, um, you know, the eights and nines and ones, sometimes they will take action first. And then later on, they will think, of, you know, what was the, you know, impact of that. And it's really, if you understand yourself on a subconscious level and your own behavioral patterns and how you act in a conflict situation, you can actually work as a team to get so much further. Because if we go alone, we go slow. If we go together, we can go so much further, you know, if we understand other human beings. So absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely yeah. right. And, and then again, uh, it's not about having, you know, being the right number. You are all the numbers. It's just that where you tend to be a lot. Yeah. I think at this stage, um, uh, if, if, if we can maybe share with you some further tools to deal with, with, with uh, rejection, uh, that can be very helpful, a tool that can, you can imp implement overnight. Um, I just see there also there's a comment, uh, Michelle is saying utilizing each person's strengths to ad advantage of the relationship. Well, yes, uh, it is to the advantage of the relationship because it's to get a win-win. I think that is maybe the, the, the purpose, to get a win-win. I'm going to show you something that is really profound and, and useful and um, you've heard it before, but you just forgot. I'm just reminding you. I'm quite sure that you've heard about a thing called iMessages. And if you said no, I think you just forgot about it. <laughs> I think if you, if you, if, if, if it's ill about the feelings of the speaker. So if you feel in a certain way and you, you, you state the problem without blaming, you see naturally what we do as human beings, it's so easy to, to blame or to put the finger because we all want to be so right and we also feel also so right and it's easier to blame sometimes but if you use this tool uh, and and i would encourage you to to do it tonight and tomorrow and and just try it but to explain it properly uh, i want you actually to take out a pen and paper have it with you and and, and do it with me because it's so uh, profound the key words, for example, is, is, is the words I feel and, I, and when you and because and what I need. And I'm going to explain it now to you. So the key words of I feel, it has to do with you identify your feeling. You, you say, for example, I feel frustrated or I feel angry or I feel whatever you feel. And then the when you is part of your sentence. That is, you describe the behavior. What, what you experience from the other person. And then the because is that you state how the behavior affects you. And then you say to the other person, you know, what you need, the behavior you want instead. Now, to explain this properly, we need to do it as an example. Otherwise, you will not understand it properly. So I actually encourage you to write down, think of a situation where you think you um, dealt with it inappropriately. So, for example, Annika, if, if uh, Sinki comes to you and say, Mom, I need more money, and now you are reacting and you maybe say, you don't have enough money or, um, you know, whatever. So now you can write the I feel. So you write the word I feel, and then you, you write there how you feel. Uh, not you alone, Annika, all the other people as well. Just write that down, I feel. And it can be a feeling like I feel what, frustrated, worried, scared, whatever. Just think of a situation, a real situation. How can you answer to another person differently? So just write that I feel whatever you feel. And once you've written that, then you write after that feeling word. You write there when you, 
than when you would. And that can be, for example, when you interrupt me or when you ask me for money or when you don't call home or when you talk so loud, whatever that is. So that's the critical starting point. I feel the emotion when you, and you describe the behavior. And then after that, you write because. And because can be, can be for example, because I'm trying to talk or uh, because I do not know where you are. Or it can be, it reminds me of my mom yelling, whatever. You give it because. And then you write down what I need. And the one I need is, for example, what I need for you is, um, my needs are for you to listen. Or my needs are for you to call me. Or my needs are to listen with you with attention. And I would nearly say, I dare you to do that. Uh, you know, the left side, the keywords. I feel when you, because what I need. And they just fill it in that and actually plan for that. So next time, you know, on an example, you have to work, work out how to, to do it in, in, in the specific words that, that your son will say to you. You, know, you can say, maybe I feel, I feel um, whatever you want to put the reaction there. You can say frustrated when you ask me for more money because our budget is not good at the moment. And what I need from you is more understanding, you know, whatever, but it's I language. The moment we have you language, because you say that you want that, then of course the other person wants to defend. So this is, is, is quite important. Um, another uh, um, coach that, that uh, you know, we, we as coaches, we work a lot together as well. Um, I'm also um, happy to have Anuka, Anuka, Anushka was without the S, Anuka here tonight. That is also uh, one of our partners. Anuka, um, anything that you want to add on the, on the iMessages? Something that I know in your practice as, as a bereavement coach and also relationship specialist, you deal a lot with this. Yes, Willie, really, you're absolutely right. Um, I mean, even in my own life, I had to learn these skills and um, learn not to do the you messages and focus you know, on, on my feelings and that. And it's it's quite hard because when we are in a situation like Annika is with her son, you know, her she's emotionally involved. Um, you know, she's obviously stressed about the finances. She's stressed about the concern about her son. Like she said, she's worried that he's going to be in trouble and stranded on the road. So, you know, it takes a, a lot of thinking and moving away from the emotion, which is very difficult. You know, when it's a stranger, we can, we can connect much easier to the logic and to the thinking. But when it's someone close to us, it's very difficult. So, um, but these messages are fantastic. Um, and um, it um, brings the message over to the other person to explain what the effect is. Um, of their behavior. Um, often, you know, because the reality is, is that we all just there for ourselves and we all just think about ourselves. So we don't often think about what the other person is experiencing or um, that sort of thing. So, um, you know, this helps in declaring your needs and the effect on you. So that you can, so that that person can become aware of that behavior and hopefully try and change it. Yeah, and, and, and what's, what's, thank you, Anuka. Uh, what, what's also important is, of course, that, you know, if you hear something like this that we talk about, to apply it is really actually to plan it and actually do it and feel awkward about it. If you want to learn a new skill in life, if you don't feel awkward starting to apply it, you're not learning it because it's sometimes unlearned to learn. So if you, for the first time, go on a bicycle, it will feel awkward and then you get it. So, so really try this iMessage very soon in the next few days with, with certain uh, realities in your life. It's going to feel not easy, but you have to imprint it and plan it and write it down and actually practice it. Then it will work. 
Um, yeah, uh, maybe another tool that that also helpful because we need to learn how to deal with our pain, our abandonments. Uh, we need to move on. And another way to to assist as a tool, and it's also something you can do in more detail after the seminar. Um, is, is for example a thing it's all about regret now what's interesting some research that I've done in the University of Stanford I think and it's also a guy that wrote a book uh, Daniel Pink he wrote a book called The Power of Regret so you can amaze, maybe say yeah but we, we're not supposed to regret things but we do and if we just suppress things, it will not work because, you know, our, our bodies work in a way that, you know, our, 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 our thoughts get, get filed in our heads also as emotions. It's there. It's stuck there in the subconscious. So you can't, you can't just suppress things. You have to deal with it. Now, one way to deal with regret, if you, if you say that, yes, but let's rather make regret with a purpose, then there's the ways. Because on the left-hand side, what I've explained there is we as, as human beings, we need stability and growth and goodness and love. That is our basic human needs that you've got. And all these needs got like an inner dialogue. So the first category of regrets, and that is what you can, if you can maybe take your piece of paper and make a few notes, and you can do it more thoroughly, you know, after the seminar. But you, the first category of regrets is those things they, uh, that Daniel Pink calls foundational regrets. It's called, if only I had done the right thing. If only I, I've done the work. And that is, for example, if only I had brush my teeth every day or if only I had eat my veggies over the years and 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 because I didn't you know now I've, I'm very fat or I have I need to go to the dentist it's going to cost me millions whatever so it's all those th typical things that you that you should have done but you haven't so that's one category of regrets but it's good to write them down actually it's good to it's good to reflect on it that you, that you take note of that what you should have done but I'll come to the to the catch in, in a while, you know, why, why this is so important. And the second category of, of, of regrets is, is what, what he calls boldness regrets. That's where you, you should have taken more risk. If only I had taken the risk. Uh, but for example, you, you got an opportunity for a promotion or opportunity for a maybe a major trip or a study group or whatever, and you, you felt insecure because of all these insecurities uh, in your subconscious, and now you, you didn't take the risk. And now you have a regret today that, damn it, I should have done that. I should have taken the risk. And there's a third category of, of regret. Uh, that is they call moral regret. That is where you say, if only I had done the right thing, well, maybe you bribed somebody or you cheated or whatever it is, but it was something against your moral compass. So that is what I say, moral regret. That is the, the, and the fourth one, interesting one, is, is the, the connection regrets. So maybe also write down a couple of re connection regrets, if only I had reached out. It is basically those people you should not have abandoned yourself maybe many years ago. It, it could have been somebody that you shouldn't have cut out of your life. Or it can be the opposite of it. It could be somebody that you should have cut out of your life and you didn't. It, it's both ways. But it's all about connection, you know, that you had in your life. So if you now look at these so-called um, categories, Ayanda, I'll give you a, in a moment. just want to explain first. Thank you for your hand. So if you... If you now look at that and you've got like the four lists, you know, to say, yeah, here's all the stuff I should have done. Here's the list of, damn it, I should have taken the risk. Here's the list of, damn it, I should have done the right thing. I feel guilty about it. Here's the list of, oh man, I should have 
didn't um, uh, cut that person out of my life. I should have stayed in contact over the years. So, so the point is, if you look at the lists, then deal with it, meaning that it's past, it's done. So how can that give you power? Well, it can, because now you can look at each of those lists and you can say, well, on the first category, I, I admit, I accept, I didn't do the following, but from now on, I am going to do the rest. From now on, I'm going to start eating my veggies or whatever I need to do. And then the second one, what risk should I take now in my life? Maybe I should not take the risk of uh, writing in for, for a, maybe a certification or something or, or wanted to do the whatever it is. I'm going to now to take certain risks. Or the other one is that uh, maybe, maybe if there's a moral risk, it's maybe possible that you can go back to past stuff that you have done wrong and you want to make it right by taking it up with somebody. But it's not about that. It's more maybe forgiving yourself for that. But to move on and say, well, I know I shouldn't have done that. I've done it. I cannot undone it. I carry on, you know. And, 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 and then, then it's power. Then it's not despair. And, and the last one, very important. Very, very important, the last one of connection, because they, they found out in the research, especially with COVID and all these things, that, are, that to deal with life is to have quality connections, because quality connections will actually save us going forward. And that's a choice, that's a choice. So, so now you can make a decision to say that, yo, I'm going to phone so-and-so I haven't had contact with 10, 20 years ago, I'm going to phone that person. Or maybe, you know, you, you have parents and kids, they are not together. And maybe it's time for the kids and parents to talk to each other. Maybe the siblings that live in this hate relationship, maybe it's time to just connect. Then you give power, power to things that you actually regret. But then you regret not anymore because now you see the positive in that. Now you see the gift in that. You see the opportunity in this. And this can actually transform your life. Or sometimes it, it might mean, you know, some, some of our uh, very deep pain, uh, rejection pains are very deep rooted in our, in our psyche. And sometimes you really need to take in the risk to go and see uh, maybe a, a therapist for, for deep work. Uh, whatever it is, but take the risk. Uh, and and, and then, then all these things uh, uh, becomes... Um, becomes easier, I would say. Then, then it's powerful. Uh, Andre, you had your, your hand up. And maybe, maybe, maybe before we come to other ideas of, of a discussion of, of how to deal with our rejections and, and whatever we can suggest, maybe this states, uh, let's stop sharing a bit and um, please feel free to write in a chat room. Uh, Ayanda, you had your hand up. Ayanda, and then Michelle. Ayanda? Um, thank you, Vili. Um, good evening, everyone. So um, you're talking about um, regret. So I just, I just want to ask, you know, um, does regret have any connection with uh, resentment? You know, like, um, for instance, um, for, for just an example, you regret meeting somebody in your life and then, and then you start to have this kind of resentment towards that. And um, like, how do how do you measure that? How do you control that? Yeah, that that is a good uh, a good question, Ayana. Thank you. You know, sometimes meeting people can actually give you regret. But uh, there's uh, a concept called positive intelligence. Um, it's part of you can say emotional intelligence if you want to. And <clears throat> and the idea there is these resentments we experience. It's part of our a small brain, you know, the brain we, that anim, animals only have. It's part of our limbic system. So we, we feel these dark emotions of resentment and judgment, and I don't like you, and, and all these I should have, uh, or you rationalize things, uh, or you, you, uh, you know, go, go into um, Afrikaans, you should get, sit, uh, sit your start and a crawl. I don't know how to put that in English. But, you know, all, all those type of feelings is, is, is actually part of your brain. 
but it makes you ill. Okay, so the positive intention of this is to warn you. Okay? There's a positive intention, but only for seconds. They often not. So what they say in, in the research is that if we can move from those, let's say, resentment emotions, if you can move from that to the other part of the brain in our thinking process, which is this part, the, the, the little bit of the bit of the right side brain, uh, uh, right side brain, but in the, the side forebrain. But you can only do that if you're calm. So first you need to be calm about it. So that you move from this judgment to empathy. So it's, it's also called the, the, uh, the empathic circuitry. So if you move from judgment to empathy, which is the opposite of, of judgment, and to have empathy for yourself, and now that will link to what Alta said earlier, don't abandon yourself. Uh, don't, uh, because then you are not empathy towards yourself. So it's empathy towards yourself first. Then empathy for the other person. Now, you don't have to agree with the other person's stances, but that person also have a lot of hassles and pains. And, and, and if you really know other people, uh, pains, it's sometimes more than yours. So it's empathy for the other person as a human being and also empathy for the reality. So if you can move from judgment to empathy, then it's easier to think what is the big picture? What is really important? Is that small thing in that irk you really important? What's the bigger picture? And then you can listen to respond, not to react. Then you can maybe see, because if your brain is now calm, then you can see what are the facts. You look at it with discernment, not with judgment. And then you can take action, you know, the right action. And there's certain things you have to do then to get over that. Now, it's so, you know, Ayanda, it's so easy to say this. I know that. But it's a skill to learn. And that's why it's called positive intelligence. It's how you react to life's pains and hassles, you know, to, to live a thriving life and not a coping life. So it's possible. But it's only possible if you make a choice about it. So it's choices. You have a choice. You have a choice to deal with that type of pain. And again, it's easy to say it. But you can deal with it with support. And that's another thing I always say with people. Sometimes you know intellectually exactly what you need to do, but you don't do it. Why don't you do it? Because you just don't feel like it, or you don't believe it, because it's all, all about your belief systems, and maybe Alta can say something about belief uh, system in a while. So, but if you, if you get your head around things and, and think proactively in the right way of positive intelligence, I would say, then you can deal with, with, with these hazards. Uh, uh, I hope I answered your question. Michelle, your hand is up. Sorry, Billy. I, I just wanted to point your attention to the chat. There's a question from Anneke as well. Uh, can you read it for us? So Anneke asked, um, does, uh, so it doesn't help to ask him why he is doing this. This is relating to the example she spoke about earlier this evening. Um, if you can elaborate on that. Yeah, I would say uh, the, the why question won't necessarily help because there could be a hundred reasons and then one can say, well, so what? Uh, I don't think why, well, I mean, why is a good question to clarify things. So it's okay to ask why do you ask? I don't think it's a problem, but it's also then a tone of your voice, you know, uh, because it's all about if, if you speak to another person, your child, wherever you speak to, and if it's in a, in a, in a rational, calm way, in our language method, then, then, then it's not, then you don't, um, you know, uh, trigger, uh, you know, the other person's emotions going up and now that other person also just wants to defend, defend, defend. So it's the way you, you, you ask the why. Um, Alta, do you agree? Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I think also, um, I think it's helping, you know, um, Annika, especially if it's your son, it's also helping him because, I mean, the more you can help him, you know, the better he will become as well and take that responsibility. But sometimes, yeah, um, I really think that would, that would help. And maybe you can check back with us, you know, maybe we can help you with that. Yeah. So, yeah, any, any discussions on this further? I, I, uh, we can move over to, to maybe more other ways to deal with... Um, 
how to overcome um, you know this pains of us we can we, we can move forward to that any any person that wants to ask another question but you're welcome to also to ask it in the chat um Alta, maybe i can share my screen again uh, you've made a list we can maybe chat about this a bit uh, we we made a list uh, of of practical um ideas about you know overcoming i just want to share my screen again i think i'm get, getting an expert with all this sharing uh yeah there it is um Alta? okay yeah just some tips for you know how to overcome fear of rejection um and i you know it's just some guidelines uh you can you can work with it um, but we we all fight for our own survival and some, sometimes you need to realize that others care more about themselves than you. So if you put always other people's, you know, priorities before your own, you know, somewhere along the line, you're going to get disappointed because you're abandoning yourself. Um, and it's coming back to do you abandon yourself every time you say yes and um, where you need to say no, for example. Then understand that people's judgment of you reflect sometimes, not always, but their insecurities or their limiting beliefs or their belief systems. Because, you know, we're easy to judge people. But the reason why we judge people is because we don't understand their belief systems. And sometimes people have limiting beliefs. For example, you know, one person will say it's very unsafe, um, you know, to travel between year and year and during daytime or nighttime or whatever for this person. But it's their insecurities that they're projecting on somebody else. I'm using a simple example now. But remember, all that we re re doing on a continuous basis reject, um, is projecting our own insecurities sometimes. So just notice that when you talk to other people, are you not projecting your own insecurities? And if other people judge you, they're talking from their own insecurities. Then practice meditation and mindful breathing. Um, Vili, I think, um, I mean, both, both of us, you know, on the Enneagram, we, we knew, you know, the, how it works in the subconscious mind and you know, what creates that fear and the anxiety in our bodies and what's creating the cortisol and the adrenaline. But, you know, that's really any fear emotion or any negative emotion is making our bodies sick. And it's really to calm down and get rid of the cortisol and adrenaline that's flowing through your body because you can't think straight. And then we make wrong decisions when we're doing it from fear. Um, is to just practice and um, sometimes we need to take a breath or two before we we respond to somebody um, because it's our, our own emotions that we're trying to other people are sitting there they don't worry you know and we're battling but we created that I mean we create our own stress then I would invite everybody to explore the root of your own fear where does it come from we all got fear we're just projecting it differently and is to go and explore it. Because if you understand the root cause of your own fear, um, it opens up a whole new world for you and you can actually manage your emotion, emotions easier. Um, that you don't react, but that you can respond. And sometimes you have to retrain your nervous system. Um, then also practice vulnerability and self-compassion. And really that's the same answer really that you gave to Ayanda. I always say to people, we easy, this inner critic in our head. You know, if you, you've got a serious inner critic, um, and I'm thinking of a perfectionist um, type of person, you know, the inner critic is very loud. You know, they will judge themselves, they will judge other people. Um, and sometimes it's just to say, is there really a lot of things that we think is right and wrong? There's sometimes just an opinion or it's gray or you can change your perspective. Um, but that you don't judge yourself. Uh, you need to have self-compassion because the moment you judge yourself, 
you're staying in the loop of the inner critic and you want to get out of it. Um, and only through self-compassion, we can create love and understanding for ourselves. And the moment we can create more love and understanding for ourselves, we can also um, create and, you know, share love and understanding for other people. And that's how we can really help change the world. It starts with the inside job. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to add to this or really if you want to. Yeah, I can it. just, uh, yeah, Michelle ask a question, which I think is a very good one. Uh, is it the same for everyone? Uh, my fear comes from the belief that I'm not good enough or that I will make mistakes. How can we look at that? Yeah, um, thanks, Michelle, for that question. We all got um, different belief systems. There's millions of different belief systems that we've got. But I always say to people, you create your beliefs and guaranteed your beliefs create your reality. Um, because the belief is creating the thought pattern. The thought pattern is creating, you know, the emotion. The emotion is creating the behavior. If you change your belief about something, um, you won't experience the fear. But it's really to move through the fears because a limiting belief is typically, I was not exposed to that. And I'm using a simple example now. Let's say you were, you know, you grew up in a home where people did not talk about money or they did not invest in stocks or um, anything like that. You will not have the exposure to that. So you will have limiting beliefs and you'll have fears around it, um, you know, to do anything to do that. And I use finances now as a specific example. But if you grew up in a home, you know, we everybody spoke about finances, everybody traded on stocks, you know, it's not a limiting belief. I'm, I'm joking now because the other night, um, and I'm going to share it here, <laughs> you know, people had to clean a fish in my house and it was three miles that's not the normal you know fishing guys and I could see the stress and the limiting beliefs you know and the adrenaline cortisol actually going on in the house and um, it was really you know I wanted to say it's just limiting beliefs because if you ask somebody else that's cleaning fish every single day you know they will just do it with no you know as a breeze so we all got limiting beliefs um, and it differs for all of us. Michelle, yes. Um, thanks, Alta. I just wanted to get back to uh, Ayanda's uh, note that he put in the chat and that has to do with the iMessages. If you don't mind, can I read it quick? Yes. yes. Okay, so Ayanda says um, his iMessages start with, I feel hurt and frustrated when you judge me without understanding me because I am not what and who you perceive me to be. So what mm -hmm. I need is for you to give yourself time to understand and know that I am not what and who you think I am. Um, and he says this is in his mind most of the time that he, he, he feels people are judging him. And this gets back to what you said with, with empathy. So, Vili, would you, you guys uh, just uh, respond on that? Yeah, it, it, it can work if you say, I feel hurt because, you know, you're saying to that person, not you make me, you do that to me, I feel hurt. And then when you judge me, of course, that other person can now say that, you know, I'm not judging you, but, you know, if you, if you follow the, the process, it, it usually should work still because, I mean, that person is doing an act and that act in this case is judging. So I suppose you can say that. Uh, or you can maybe say, I feel hurt and frustrated uh, when you judge me without understanding me because I'm not what you perceive me to be. It's fine. Uh, what I need from you yeah, I, I'm okay with this. Um, Alta, if you maybe agree with me or, or Anuka, I think it's fine. I, I, we just want to, with this I message, just not get, uh, provoke a, 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 another you message from the other person. So, Vili, if I may just add to that, um, mm. I think, uh, you know, what one has to be careful about is when you um, take on the behavior of the other person, that's more a judgment on his side. So uh, we cannot say for certain that that person is judging him. Yeah. 
that's yeah. that's how he perceives it but it might not be factual mm. so i think that's often where a confusion comes in where he may feel he's being judged however it might not be factually true yeah no very true maybe one can maybe look at put the wording different and not use the word judge but i mean yeah but but yes thank you thank you for that um i can add a few things um but maybe at this stage, I think I'll tell you what, what, what I like about is this, that, that you've got, um, you, do you want to read this? Yeah, it's just food for thought, um, you know, and tonight's session, what I really want to achieve is that we all got this fear of abandonment, fear of rejection, different belief systems. Um, but underneath your fear of abandonment, there's a fear of rejection. And underneath that fear of rejection are actual experiences of hurt that was caused by rejection. Because what we fear the most has already happened to us. How else would we know what rejection and abandonment feel like? And the, the message really here is that we, we human. And um, we need to move forward, but um, people don't, people will not do things to you that they haven't experienced themselves. So, um, yeah, I think it's just beautiful thought, and we need to have much more compassion with other people and ourselves. Yeah. And also, this one is also like a winner, I would say, Alta. <laughs> Yeah, you cannot create a new future when holding on to the emotions of the past. Um, and really, it's something that we all need to work on on a daily basis. How do we meet, move on and how do we move forward? And I always say to people, you either get better or you get better. And, um, you know, it's always good to learn the lesson and not to repeat the lesson because otherwise the lesson will come around again. So um, how can we better ourselves with a new understanding, with a new um, perception? Because it's really just perceptions that we live, live with. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and again, it's a choice. You know, it's a choice. Uh, another maybe way of looking at things um, before we um, close and I'll ask a few questions um, uh, Michelle, your hand is up. Hi, Billy. Just the last comment from Yuan Maritz, if, mm. um, if I may. Uh, so Yuan says, somebody mentioned on the radio the other day to be passionate, but with compassion. And, and uh, it, it, it's, a, yeah, it's, a, it's a nice saying, if you can chat about that. Essentially, trying to see both sides or to put yourself in the shoes of the other person, especially if you a goal focused person. Um, and uh, if you don't mind, let me just read Shanine's uh, message as well. She says, um, on not feeling good enough, I never believed in myself um, feeling not good enough. And when I was younger, okay, uh, I gained confidence only once I started believing in myself um, and it. Uh, included self-compassion and empathy as well so that reflects what Anuka and and Alta said earlier as well but if you can chat about Johan's message to be passionate with compassion that's lovely Alta yeah I think it comes back to we all human and um, you know we need to create safe spaces for other people otherwise we will never grow um, and I think it's really to have an understanding for other people and we can only, you know, come from a place of kindness, love and understanding, um, then people will feel safe and they will open up to us. Um, yeah. So I think, I think it's critical, um, you know, to move forward. And yes. And it's, it's interesting that it's two part of the brains, you know, that this, uh, survival of flight brain, the small brain of us is, is the fear brain. And this part of the brain is our compassion, our empathy, our empathy circuitry. It's another part of the brain. And if we can learn and teach ourselves over time to get this lesser and this higher 
then we are on a winning path. Uh, maybe I can I can share for the, there's a few minutes left. I can maybe share the four share the four A's. I always say, and it's quite a useful thing to be reminded of. The first A is being aware, aware, and and also like tonight. I mean, the session definitely made some of you more aware of what we're talking about. And if you can create more awareness over time with who you are, if you're aware of your feelings and thoughts, etc., it's easier to see other people, to be aware of other people's, you know, how they uh, react or, or, or how you perceive them. It helps. If you can manage your own emotions, it's easier to lead and manage other people. Uh, so it all starts with yourself. So that's the awareness. That is why tools that can help you is the Enneagram and, and the courses and, and counseling these things. So that's the first A is awareness. The second thing to help you with dealing with, with life is, is uh, the second A is accept, acknowledge, acceptance. Now, acceptance doesn't mean that you agree with things. I mean, something bad happens, how can you say, well, that's great, you know? Acceptance is, is not judgment. It's, it's discerning. It's, it's what happened. This is what happened. There's nothing you can change. It, it happened. So it's acceptance. What, what I said with the regret lists, you know, that's the past. You have to accept that. It happened. And then if you move to a third A, which I say is uh, appreciation, if you start making a list of what you appreciate in life. That list is long. That list is very long. And the last A is action. Then take appropriate action because of the way now you perceive things. Take into account the bigger picture, uh, being creative, etc. But in addition to that, you know, it's also very practical things you can do, you know, to, to help it's like get physical. I mean, if you read books on, on getting well, uh, on, on, on anxiety, depression, and general mood stuff. I mean, get physical again. It's, 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 it's choices, it's decisions. That you, if you suffer with that, get support in that. And, um, and then also learn something new. You know, just start le learning something new. Uh, some people say we, what changed their lives, of course, then you have money, but you don't need to have a lot of money to travel. I mean, you can travel very cheap. So just start traveling. Uh, also start meeting new people you know sometimes we are stuck and sometimes we need to make a decision and, and get new blood in, in, your, in your quality connections and of course uh, coaching, counselling, therapy whatever you need so it's a choice to, to act not just think and feel and, 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 and because life is doing I will say that life, life is doing um, yeah, there's a lot of, I think, chats. Uh, Michelle, your hand is up as well. Is it chats in the room? Yeah, I know. Uh, we just had a quick chat, um, Shanine and I, about, uh, I was, while you were speaking, I was saying empathy. That's the biggest lesson I learned from the PQ course as well, is that um, empathy for yourself and then empathy for someone else to listen to them and say, yes, if I don't agree, yes, and, and just add something you do agree agree with and so on so the yeah. the positive intelligence course was just amazing and um, yeah that was the little discussion oh 100 uh, please have a look at the, the series uh, we will in another four to six weeks we will have another webinar uh, same uh, you know broad one life by design versus life by default and if you want to know more about positive intelligence feel free to to contact me you've got my details uh, if you want to know more uh, about, uh, especially financial coaching, I think that is uh, Alta's strong point, but we both share our passion for the Enneagram. You're welcome to contact either me or Alta for the Enneagram or, or whoever you feel comfortable with. Uh, and also Anuka um, is also a coach, a life coach, focusing on relationships as well. Um, and also I see... Um, a coach in the making, uh, Gary Damerol. Uh, hello, Gary. Just say hi to everybody. Uh, Gary is also, uh, I think, a, a business coach. As, uh, we're helping people with businesses. And the rest, uh, I know half of the people, three quarters, I would say the rest, I actually do not know personally, but some of you uh, went through my positive intelligence program and some of you uh, worked with, with Alta. And uh, also, yes, yeah, some of you worked with Anuka as well at this stage. Um, is there any other uh, last comments on the chat room, Michelle? 
Uh, yeah, um, I would like everyone to just re reflect on the discussion that we had and maybe think of something that they could definitely take away from this discussion, something they've learned or something that touched them. Or, yes. You know, is, uh, it would be nice. Maybe to the one or two things that, that, yes, I thank you for that, Michelle. Uh, just to put in the chat book, everybody, if we can get the, like the f uh, 35 to 40 comments, that would be great. And if this, you can also add if there's something that you want more of. Uh, and yeah, uh, Alta, any last words from your side? Yeah, I think um, yeah, people if they they more than welcome to share. Also, you know what is the things that they battle with? Um, you know that they don't understand, especially within relationships and finances. And yeah, maybe we can help. Maybe we can have a future webinar on that you know have a little bit of a insight on that so more than welcome share anything um and yeah we will gladly help one thing i want to reiterate again um sometimes you can go to coaching and therapy for years to come and and sometimes it's, it's because you're not applying the tools uh, and 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 one very important thing is that the, the coach or the therapist cannot change you. You can only change yourself. Uh, the coach or the therapist is just support. I mean, if you, if you, and it's, it's a lot about what do you really want in your life? If you really want something, you really want it, then maybe there's something you need to do about it, you know? And, and if you don't do it, find out what is the root behind it. It could be trauma. It could be, um, just that you don't eat your veggies it can be anything but but find out the reason and then address the reason and then you have to apply and practice certain tools if you want to run the comrades you maybe need to do your 10 kilometers a day if you if you want to be health and fit maybe you need to you know eat your veggies uh, and <laughs> whatever but i mean it's, it's just that it's it's doing life is doing it's it's unchanging is doing and the whole thing is that you'll do this till the day you die. You, 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 it's it's, it's uh, just Hollywood that will tell you that, you know, you know you've arrived, you know. It's, it's about the journey, not the destination. You know, to put it bluntly, our destination is death. So we are here. And uh, the journey is important. And you, or you can use another metaphor and say the destination is maybe, you know, a good retirement or or certain good stuff you want to achieve in 10 to 20 years, that's the goal, it's fine. But if you now you get there, what now? So the journey is important and, and take away all the stumbling blocks of the journey. And that's a choice. I mean, you think you don't have a choice, but we do have choices. And if you, if you can't do the choices, get help and support. There's a lot available to, to us. So that's a couple last words from my side. Uh, not sure if anybody still wants to share something. Anuka, anything you want to add, or Alta, or Michelle, anybody? I think then we can. Yeah, I'd like to um, just say my takeaway from this would definitely be the regret part of your session. Um, the fact that regret can actually be your gift, mm. where you can see things that you could have done differently, and now you can do either do it better now or you know change the way that you did it before and so on you know so um everyone keeps saying no regrets and there's this whole buzz about no regrets and mm. but this actually makes sense to me to use that regret and and make our future better mm. um so i love that and i would encourage everyone guys you're welcome to speak up um are there any any comments and questions that you want to add? We do have some time. Yeah, I see there's a lot of comments on the chat room. Thank you for that. Yeah, the, the comments are amazing, Billy. Right. So um, a lot of the comments include the iMessages. Um, everyone seems to love that. And it, it does, sure. uh, yeah, I would say there's a lot of value in that. Um I see Shanine identified herself as a nine. Then there's a lot of thank yous. What stand out is the common humanity of rejection. So, yeah, I see most people are saying, you know, we don't always think that other people sort of feel the same rejection yeah. and the same pain that we do. 
and yeah. I know from my point of view, definitely. So that makes sense that we all do feel the same pain. Uh, we just deal with it differently. Yeah. Um, and that's about it. If you, uh, yeah, if anyone else wants to add, there's, you, you can't create a future by holding on to the past. Yes, Johan, yep. um, that was a lovely message as well. So yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. That's, that's it from me. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, and yeah, looking forward to the next one. To hopefully see you on the next one. We'll keep you updated. Thanks, Thank ladies you. and gentlemen. So yeah, keep an eye out on YouTube. We will send you the link as well. So anyone who wants to uh, either uh, send the link to family or friends or want to listen to it again and so on, you're most welcome to do so. And if there are any problems with that, you're most wel welcome to contact me as well. So thank you for joining. We do appreciate it. Thanks for your time and have a lovely evening. Thanks, Willie. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.